Hello and welcome back to our channel. Today we have a story of a devoted father whose girlfriend's infidelity shattered their family, leaving him to raise their daughter alone. Now, years later, she seeks reconciliation, but he stands firm in his decision to move forward without her. Here's the full story with an update. My story begins 16 years ago, when I met Lucy. She was an amazing girl, intelligent, beautiful, fancy, funny, just the greatest girl I ever met. I felt so lucky when we start dating. And after a year into the relationship, we had a baby. I was living the dream, living with my girlfriend, raising our little daughter, being a happy family. I loved Lucy so much, and after some years, we were finally getting married. Our daughter was the most excited one about the wedding, she was going to be the flowers girl. Everything seemed to be perfect. Until, one day, when I was heading back home, a guy wanted to talk with me. At first I believed he may want to sell me something until he mentioned Lucy. Politely, he asked me to talk in a private place. He then asked me to please stop everything about the wedding and step back, because he and Lucy wanted to be together. I didn't believe him, until he started to tell me a lot of details about her that would be impossible to know. I returned home as fast as I could, I didn't wanted this to be truth, and told her about it, hopping all was a mistake. But no, it wasn't. The next hour she told me everything. She has been cheating on me from the last two years. She told me about how all the times she said she loved me, that she wanted us to be together and she loved our family, were all lies. How her new man was younger, stronger, handsome and better lover. She said that she didn't wanted to be tied to me. How she lost her freedom for being a mother and she didn't wanted to be a wife, that she wanted her freedom back. The final stab was when she said she was happy that I finally knew, and now she was able to leave. I cried, begged, humiliate myself and got on my knees, asking for another chance to try fix our relationship. But she didn't want it, she wanted the thrill and excitement that this new guy make her feel. By the next day, she left us. I felt broken, humiliate, emasculated. But my daughter needed me. She was heartbroken, her mother left, and she believed it was her fault. She heard when Lucy said she didn't wanted to be a mother anymore. She needed me, and I needed to be strong for her. Fortunately we had help, my family and Lucy's family supported us in any way possible. Her parents were so ashamed for their daughter's actions that they couldn't look me to the face without apologize for everything she did. I will be in debt with everyone forever for all their help. Fast forward, 10 years later. After lots of time and therapy, my daughter and I are living happy. She is the light of my life. A beautiful 15 years old lady who I love. Our wounds are healed and we have a very good life. But then, she came back. When me and my daughter were getting back home, we found Lucy in front of our apartment, waiting for us, wanting to talk. I recognize her immediately, and I would like to say that I did something cool, like ignoring her, asking her to leave, or at least be hostile with her. But no, I'm an idiot, my heart skip a beat in the moment I saw her. She still was beautiful as before, but somehow, she looked even better, maybe the age make her look mature and elegant, maybe the dress, or the makeup, I don't know, but I let her in, while our daughter gave us some space and went to her room. She told me everything she did since she left. Basically, she lived with that guy for some years. She said how much she enjoyed it, all the fun she got and how she believed those were the best years of her life, until she noticed that the excitement of that new relationship was fading slowly, in some point. She started to cheat on that guy too. According to her, she wanted to feel alive and excited. Eventually, that relationship ended, and she started dating other guys. Every relationship became shorter than the previous one, until she only had casual hookups. She also said that sometimes she thought about us, our family, but she said she was too proud to admit she made a mistake. Until last year, she got COVID and it hit her really hard, to the point that she believed she would die, and realized how alone she was, how stupid she was, and the mistake she made so long ago. After all of that, she said she regretted everything she did and said, and now she was ready to marry me and be the family we always meant to be. When she was done I asked her to leave, to give me some time to think. She accepted, saying she would be back the next day. For years I dreamed about her coming back, and now it was happening. But it just felt wrong. Since then, she visit almost daily, wanting to talk about the best years of our relationship, and how we could be a happy family again. I asked for help. To my family, to my friends. Most of them said I would be making the worst mistake of my life if I take her back. Others said that I could give her a chance. It took me a lot to heal and some more time to start making new relationships and I would be risking everything. One night, my daughter and I had a deep conversation about all this. I always try to involve her in every part of our life and this issue concerned her too because as her mother. Sometimes she surprised me being so wise and mature because she told me can you really love someone that hurted us so much. 
and that was everything I needed. I would never forgive myself if I let her hurt my daughter again. And I said that to Lucy, if she want to be around or have a relationship with our daughter, I'm okay with it. Only if my daughter want it. But I told her we are not getting back. Lucy only said that she would make me fall in love with her again and that she would not give up. JP Berry 77 says, she had the best years of her life without you and your daughter. To me that says everything. There's no regret there. Be proud of yourself. You put in the hard work and raised an amazing daughter. Find someone worthy of that. Your ex ain't it. Grey Skies replies, she hasn't changed at all. She intentionally blindsided them to get her way even though she knew it wasn't what was best for his child. She completely ignores his boundaries and shows up every day trying to re-spark feelings after explicitly being told no. Lucy still only cares about herself. She will hurt them again because they never really mattered. Not like she matters. Ugh. I didn't expect so many answer, so, thanks to everyone for your answers and advices. Thanks to the ones who made me open my eyes and helped me to realize I still having issues with my ex and I'm not over with her. And overall, to the ones who pointed the risk of hurting my daughter that is letting her back in our lives. I can recognize my weakness, but I'm not letting her to hurt my baby again. So don't worry, I'm not getting back with her. Since the post, she had been insisting on meeting, she wanted to talk. I decided to have one last talk with her and setting my boundaries. We met in a public place. The talk was long and hard. I wanted her to be honest, and I told her the moment I caught a lie I was leaving. I asked if she was really sorry, or are we her last option? Did she really love us, or are we just a consolation prize? Did she came back for love, or because she was unable to find another man anymore? She was unable to answer any of that. She only said things like it's not like that. You need to understand me, I'm not like this anymore. She kept insisting on giving her another chance. That we can love each other again. That we could be together. She never even mentioned our daughter in any moment. Only after I pointed it, she started to mention her. When I tried to settle that we were over, she grabbed my hand. And as some of you told me she would do, she tried to tempt me. Pulling down her blouse, showing me her cleavage, and saying we can find a room so I can do whatever I wanted with her. That she wouldn't say no to anything. To compensate me. I didn't recognize that woman. She wasn't the amazing girl I met. She wasn't the mother of my daughter. I didn't know who that woman was, but she wasn't my Lucy. I said her to let me go, that we were over. Neither I or my daughter wanted anything with her. So please, leave us alone. We were living a good life without her. She then went mad, saying I couldn't left her, that it wasn't my choice, that she doesn't have anything else, that I can't take away her daughter. I still don't know why, but that last sentence triggered me. The next are not my exact words, but are close of what I said on that moment. Your daughter, your daughter, you are not her mother. You only gave birth to her, but you are not her mother. Tell me, where you were when she was sick, where you were when she had fever, when she was scared on the night, when her first teeth fell, when she cried on the nights because she missed her mom, where you were on her first day of school, when she had her first period, when she had her first boyfriend, when her heart broke for the second time, because the first one who broke her heart was her mother. Which joystick were you riding when she needed a mom? You have no right to claim you are her mother because you never acted like that. She tried to reply, but I saw how she was unable to find the words. I left her, back at home. She sent me some texts, asking for another meeting, for another chance, that she loves me and she can change, but I'm done. You all were right, she doesn't love me or our daughter at all, she only loves herself, having her on my life would be bad, toxic, I don't need that. I don't need her. My daughter and I are going back to therapy soon. Some of you are right, I need to work on myself, be stronger, and get over those feelings for her. Because they're not real, just a memory of what I thought she was. Pickles McPickle Pants says, I'm really proud of your friend. I know it was a hard decision but it was definitely the correct one. I can't even imagine the heartache your daughter would have if you had let her mom come home. She would have a literal front row seat to see how little her mom cares about her. OP says, thanks. I'm not letting that happen. Her wellness will always come first. Karib92 says, sometimes Redditors can sound harsh in their comments, especially when we say leave them. But it's really because we hate seeing good people get played by bad ones. You sir, are good. Your daughter sounds like a wise girl. You don't need anyone bringing unnecessary negativity into the life you worked so hard to achieve. Best of luck. OP, you're an exceptional dad, and I appreciate your courage in taking the necessary actions and speaking up to safeguard not just yourself, but your daughter as well. My sincere wish is for both of you to attain tranquility and never have to encounter such a dreadful individual again. May joy and affection accompany you and your daughter on your journey forward. Good luck and stay strong.
I, 35 male, am married to my wife, 37 female, for 11 years and together for 14. We have a beautiful 7 years old daughter and our marriage has been great without any major problems until last year. Last year, I learned that my wife cheated on me before our marriage. One of her friends became religious and confessed her actions to me which had me confront my wife. She was shocked that I learned it and apologized profusely about her actions. However, she said it's not something important now because we have been going strong and have a family together. She told me I should come to terms with it since it happened four months into being exclusive and she was a stupid girl out of college back then. My mind told me the same. It happened 14 years ago and we are happy right now. I decided to forgive her and continue our usual life. Reality was not that great. My mental took a big hit. I realized it's not something that happened 14 years ago for me. The cheating happened for me when my wife confirmed it. I was less confident, could not have sex with my wife. I just could not get an erection for her. This turned into feeling disgusted being around her. I even took a DNA and STD test secretly. Thankfully, our daughter is mine and I am clear of STD. Then a year of intense individual therapy started for me. I realized I needed to change somehow. I was not the same person I used to be. I also communicated my feelings to my wife and after pushing a bit, we started going couples counseling too. However, at the end of everything I decided to proceed with divorce. Here are my reasonings. She not only cheated back then but lied to me for 14 years. She did not confess the action herself. Even though she apologized, she dismissed the fact by saying it's not important anymore. Young me was robbed of having a choice. Cheating was, and still is, one of the biggest deal breakers for me. If I knew it back then, I would have broke it off. I am happy with my life and I am glad that our daughter came to world. She is the light that shines the brightest for me. One of the biggest reasons I keep living but I still was robbed of a choice back then. I see an MC could not our problems and my feelings towards her. It also started affecting family life which could affect our daughter. I think our daughter would be better off having us as co-parents instead of living in a broken family environment where consistent arguments are present. Sex life is basically dead for me. We do make love but I feel like those women on film, series that just lay and look at the ceiling waiting it to be over. The only difference is that I am a man. I do not even want non-sensual gestures anymore. Last week, I had a sit down with my wife and explained everything I wrote here in detail, my feelings, reasonings and some other private things. I have been talking to a lawyer for the last month and papers are almost finalized. 50-50 custody, 50-50 assets sharing and as amicable as possible. I explained everything truly and clearly to her. She freaked out and had a panic attack. We spent the night at ER. She is begging me to reconsider and not throw away 14 years. However, even though I would like to stay it will result in us being roommates and a broken family environment for our daughter. Am I in the wrong here? KGBJ says, this isn't about being an idiot or not. You're not able to deal with something and it has changed your view of someone. Alt says, this isn't an idiot or not question. You aren't able to love her the way you did before. You no longer trust her. Your relationship is dysfunctional. Therapy didn't help. Calling you, or her, after all, she's the cheater, an idiot will solve absolutely nothing. All you can do now is to make the separation as smooth as possible for your daughter. Biddyberry says, not the idiot, and I'll tell you why. Even though she apologized, she dismissed the fact by saying it's not important anymore. The only thing that infuriates me more than cheating is someone being dismissive of their cheating because it happened so long ago. It's not old news for you. For you it just happened because you just found out. Now even if your wife had been truly apologetic and contrite, I would say you weren't the idiot for not being able to let this go. But the fact that she tried to sweep it under the rug and pretend like it doesn't matter. Huge red flag. Plus you clearly can't look at her the same way. Get out. It's a shame you couldn't have found out earlier but at least you know now. And the marriage, it's best for both you and your child. Firstly, I want to thank everyone for their ideas and input about my situation. Some people reached out to me on Reddit chat to state their opinions and we had long talks. They have been incredibly helpful and I want to thank them especially. Some people asked if we went to counseling together. Yes, we have been visiting a counselor for over a year now on top of my individual therapy. I understand blowing up a marriage for something happened 14 years ago is not logical. However, my feelings towards my wife got even worse after counseling and therapy. It started with not being able to trust her, converted to not wanting sex, then not wanting non-sensual gestures and finally I am not even comfortable to be in the same space as her. 
We have been less than roommates in the last couple of months. I do not hate or resent her but I just cannot shake off the feelings. I would say I forgave her but it's not about forgiving anymore when there are no feelings and love. I do not want my daughter to grow up in such an environment. I know how hurtful it can be. I experienced a similar situation with my parents only the genders reversed. Living in such an environment breaks you as a child and teen. I would have much preferred if my mother just divorced my dad instead of staying for my sake. These being said, I had a long talk with my wife this morning. She has not been eating much since visiting ER and I am concerned for her well-being and safety. Some Redditors who reached out suggested considering separation before proceeding with the divorce and see if my feelings would change. That is very logical actually. I proposed this idea to my wife and she was happy to hear it. I have an upcoming business trip to Netherlands next week and I am planning to extend my stay and stay with my sister once I am back. Wife abruptly suggested one-sided open marriage and I can do what I want on that business trip if it'll save the relationship. Make us even and change my feelings. I rejected because it has nothing to do with that. Even if it changed something for me, it would devastate her knowing I cheated on her in the future. It's not something easy to get over and not an easy decision. That is all the update. We'll try separation for a while and depending on the result I'll make my decision. Thank you for all the help and opinions. Toadwart79 says, Did she ever say why she cheated in the first place? He proposing a one-sided open relationship does not make them even. She slept with someone else without taking his feelings into account and lied about it for 14 years. He'd be making love with her permission. These two things are nowhere near being the same. I hope he finds single life to be happier. Gustav Vaz says, I think the fact that she suggested an open marriage, even a one-sided one, is pretty tone-deaf of her. It kind of feels like she just wants to be even. It wasn't just sex. It was a betrayal. You're not upset because she made love. You're upset because she cheated. Sleeping around with her permission is not the same as her cheating. OP, I empathize with what you're experiencing. Don't burden yourself with the pressure of salvaging your marriage. Take the time you need during this separation, but it appears you've emotionally disengaged. Stay resilient and trust that you're making the best choice for yourself and your family. Retaliatory infidelity won't solve anything. You merit greater respect for yourself. My sincere wish is for you to discover inner peace. Good luck and stay strong. Many moons ago I spent my youth in the army. I worked in comms and spent some excellent years doing dumb crap, with some of the best guys and girls you could ever meet. One of those years of my misspent youth I was deployed to a hot and sandy location. This length of deployment was unusual for me as most deployments in the British army are six months. The extra time was due to us being one of the first units deployed. And after supporting the initial deployment they requested volunteers to remain and support and train some of the relieving units and newly deployed logistics headquarters, HQ. At this stage in my career I had been lucky enough to jump from deployment to deployment and I was loving the extra money that gave me, so I happily volunteered to stay. I was tasked with supporting one of the logistics HQs. I had run that detachment earlier in the deployment and was happy to return as it was far away from the main HQ and all the bored adults and seniors that the HQ brings. Think sweeping the desert, that kind of thing. Our little detachment was an oasis in a sea of nonsense. It was just six guys and girls with me as the detachment commander. I was a corporal, CPL, full screw at the time. The isolated nature of our debt meant that anyone sent there had to be able to operate independently, be very adaptable, and open to improvise to support where required. Our main unit also liked to send us their troublemakers, but due to the nature of the debt, they could only send us people who could do their role also. So I ended up with all the best and most interesting scum of my unit, and it was amazing. For any Yanks reading it would have been a E4 Mafia paradise. Within weeks we had a patio and rock garden set up. We had a BBQ pit, shower area, gym. We'd sorted a deal with the local civilian contractors for us to receive beer in exchange for our help in vehicle and generator servicing. The best part was due to us being a comms debt, it was restricted entry to our area so we were free from any surprise visits. Now that I've set out the backstory, I'll get on to the malicious compliance. The HQ we were supporting was regularly rotating its senior non-commissioned officers, SNCO, and officers from the deployment. They'd do the minimum time to qualify for a medal, and they they'd get replaced with someone new. It was a crappy practice that eventually got shut down, but not till much later deployments. We were fairly used to this by now and the only overhead we had has creating new accounts for the seniors. The guys who actually did the work, my peer group and the HQ, stayed the same mostly. 
This latest rotation saw the old regimental quartermaster sergeant, RQMS, being replaced by a newly promoted RQMS. This new guy was a prick, full of his own self-importance, hated that we had a little island of nonsense free tranquility within his eyesight. I'd see him pacing outside our fence line when he first arrived, unable to comprehend that he wasn't allowed to just walk in. By this point I had been in this location for about six months and I was thoroughly past the point of giving any Fs. The RQMS hated that he had to deal with me, a lowly full screw as OC of the debt, and myself and crew of reprobates was out of his chain of command. One day he absolutely lost his crap because we were BBQing half a goat and had invited a few of his guys to join us after work for some beers and delicious goat wraps. By this stage we'd used Hessian to fence off our BBQ and bar area so that we could obscure it from prying eyes. He went off to get some of his unit's regimental police, RPs, these are not real military police, just jobsworths with no real job in a unit, to come and shut us down. I told them to jog on. They weren't getting in my debt and I don't care who sent them. Apparently the next day he was apoplectic. The guys who worked with him warned us he was determined to bring my debt to heel. His solution was removing our welfare package that we were issued through his department as a favor from his guys for some services that we were providing. It consisted of a small fridge, TV and British Forces Broadcasting Service TV decoder, BFBS box. The conversation went roughly as thus. RQMS CPL Tossbot. It appears that there has been a paperwork error and you have been given one of my welfare packages by mistake. Me? Okay sir. I'd be happy to fill that in. Shall I drop by your office? RQMS, you can drop by my office and bring the package, but you won't be filling in any paperwork CPL. You may have wrangled the last RQ but as far as I'm concerned you lot can do one if you think you're getting that welfare package back off me. And if there's anything else that I find that isn't 100% correct paperwork wise then I'd be shutting that right down. You may not be mine, and I may not be able to enter you little compound, but I'm going to have you son. Every resup demand, every transport request better be completed correctly. I'm going to make your lives hell with paperwork and admin. Quem malicious compliance. Me, I'm sorry to hear that sir. I'm sorry you feel the service that we provide isn't good enough. The old RQMS was very happy with services that he was getting from us, and sent over the spare welfare package as a thank you. Are you sure that it's paperwork that's the issue here? Are you not happy with phones and the internet? RQMS CPL I have not complaints regarding the comms. You just need to complete the correct paperwork and have it authorized by me. At this point it is clear that he is never going to authorize the return of the welfare package and is very smug about it. Me Okay sir, you're of course correct. Paperwork is essential. RQMS Are you giving me attitude CPL? Me Not at all sir. Just agreeing with you. To be clear you are happy with everything else we provide to the HQ. You just want me to complete the correct paperwork. RQMS, that's correct CPL. Me, no problem sir. Happy to oblige. I delivered the welfare package back to his stores. His guys were very apologetic. I told them not to worry. You see, the welfare package was a thank you for all the extra phone lines and terminals that we'd provided for the previous RQMSs. These expanded his and his unit's working capacity. Most importantly I had run phone line to the sleeping areas so that him and his lads could call home without using their limited welfare phone cards. I had also laid some precious unfiltered internet lines too. Internet to deployed units is very rare, and unfiltered internet is almost unheard of for British units. What I was providing was immense value to lonely squaddies, and it was also without paperwork. When I got back to my dead I flicked a couple of switches, turning off all the paperwork less connections. I waited for the inevitable. It didn't take long. The first visitor was one of the privates letting us know that he'd been cut off mid-call back home. I apologized and explained what was going on with the RQMS. He understood, not happy about it, but understood. He went off muttering about throbbers who can't leave well enough alone. The next was one of the RQMS's full screws, who I have a lot of time for. She came round and asked what was going on with the comms. She was in the office when I had the conversation with the, the RQMS earlier. We had a bit of chat about what a belter he is, and then she asked what was going on. I explained that as per the RQMS's request, we are following his example and doing things by the book, and I've turned off all services without the correct paperwork. She looked at me knowingly. So what does that mean she asked? I explained that the only services that I had been ordered to provide were for the HQ. The rest would have to request them through me and be approved by Division HQ as per orders. I handed her a copy of the request forms to be completed in triplicate as I didn't have a photocopier 
and they couldn't send me it by email as I'd just turned their kid off. She had a bit of a chuckle and went off back to her boss, paperwork in hand. You see, the only orders I had were for the 6 lions and terminal in the HQ. The 30 odd lions I'd laid extra were essentially me being a good bloke and supporting the mission and departments as they grew around the HQ. It was initiative and adaptability on my part. These were all now off and I had a steady stream of visitors throughout the day wanting to know what was going on. I directed them all the RQMS, who had the request forms. My last visitor was the operations captain. He was a top bloke, a late entry, LE officer had gone through the ranks from private to regimental sergeant major, RSM, and was now commissioned as a officer, who had spent more than a few nights in our compound with a beer and talking crap with us. He was one of the very first recipients of a private line and internet. He asked me what was going on. He'd been round the houses so he knew there were shenanigans afoot. I told him the situation. His face dropped. Leave it with me is all that he said, and off he went. Thirty minutes later the RQMS was back at the entrance to my compound with the welfare package. The ops captain was with him, looming over him as only a RSM, or former RSM in this case, can. Me, hello sir, how can I help? RQMS, very sheepishly, hello CPL. There seems to have been an error and we've found your paperwork for the welfare package. So I'm returning it, with my apologies. Me, no need to apologize sir, easy mistake to make. RQMS, so, are we good? Me, and the other paperwork moving forward. RQMS, there's no need for all that. Looking over his shoulder at the ops captain, we are after all on the same team. Me, we are indeed sir. I look over my shoulder and give one of my guys a nod. I think you'll find everything is now back to as it was. RQMS, excellent. Thank you very much CPL. And off he went. The ops captain stared daggers at him as he left. He just gave me a nod and confirmed that drinks were still on for the next day and toddled off back to his pit. I was never bothered by the RQMS again. Responsible N7361 says, as a former supply guy, anything IT, comms needed they got. Oddly, we always had great IT connections and service. Don't piss off medical, don't piss off supply, don't piss off comms, IT. Professor Tech Support replies, General life lesson, do not ever piss off the people who provide you with necessities. Only piss off the people who provide you with comforts if you are willing to live without them. IT Merck for Hire says, I was a comms guy for an American unit and have a similar story. Also downrange, we provided a media server with terabytes of movies and TV shows. We usually had new releases within a couple of days of them arriving in theaters and new TV episodes the day after they aired. We provided access to the drive to anyone in the unit who asked to give them a bit of a taste of home while they deployed, but we controlled access via Active Directory. Downstairs from our office was the motor pool. All our guys were able to come down check out a vehicle and do their errands like run to the exchange or the chow hall both of which were half a mile from our compound. In 120 degree heat and air conditioned vehicle made these trips much more pleasant. Our guys treated the vehicles well, made sure to keep the vehicles fueled and reasonably clean given the conditions. Anyways a new SNCO arrived to take over the motor pool and got a stick up his crap about paperwork and keeping the vehicles clean, nearly impossible to keep 100% clean in a dusty environment. One day one of our guys returned from the chow hall and the vehicle had a bit too much dust for the SNCO's liking. So he took it upon himself to restrict this person from checking out a vehicle for a week. The guy came into our office and told our SNCO what happened, and we collectively decided that the motor pool didn't need access to the media drive for the same period. It took all of 30 minutes for the motor pool guys to come to our office to report they were having issues accessing the media server. SNCOs had a conversation and between them it was decided that our reasonable efforts to keep the vehicles clean were sufficient, and that it's probably not the best idea to have a joystick measuring contest with the comms shop. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you really like my videos then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a good day.